I did a Bachelor of Engineering majoring in software. On my first day at university, it was quite confronting. I came from an all-girls high school um, and I ended up walking into the lecture room and there was maybe 10 girls and about 140 guys. Being a woman in science and in physics in particular, well, there's usually not very many of them. And for many years, I was the only one, the first woman of this, the first woman of that, like the first woman uh, president of the Australian Institute of Physics. And so as a consequence, it, yeah, sometimes it's a little bit lonely. Probably the biggest barrier I ran into was when I was returning to work after having my first child and there was no access to flexible work arrangements at that time. So I was expected to be at home on standby and be at the airport within an hour's time after getting called off standby with an 11 month old baby. Mostly it's fine being the only, uh, being one of the fewer women in the tech industry. Um, there's. Some days when it's a bit harder, you kind of have to get used to being the only woman in the room um, and you need to be able to find your voice in those situations. The biggest barriers I've come across is people not accepting the fact that I might be a bit different in the way I approach things. I think you find women bring much greater diversity in their approach, in their thinking. And sometimes, I must admit, I've found it a little bit difficult to be accepted for that. I guess when I face challenges in the industry, I've had to draw on my own resilience and strength and just continue to come back to the reason why I did geoscience. And that's because I have a love and a passion for it and I just want to find stuff. <laughs> My first foray into technology was when my father bought me an Apple IIe and I very carefully took the entire computer apart. I um, spent a huge amount of time looking through all of the components and then I had to beg my father for a loan so I could buy a soldering iron to put the whole computer back together again. I would like to be an engineer since I was very young. My mom works in a factory and she told me if you become an engineer, you do the design and you could earn more than, than her, what she, she's doing, multiple times salary. One of the leading projects we are currently doing is to detect the biomarkers in the human breast. So this provides a pain-free and risk-free management tools for diabetes patient. And the technology can be further enhanced to other applications, such as detect the early stage of lung cancer. This groundbreaking technology and cutting edge technology, this will save thousands and thousands of people's life. My role is to basically set the strategy um, and make sure that we have safe and reliable operations in uh, the waste management at Anstow. It is a team that is a little bit more than 80% male and I am the first female um, manager that they've had in this role. My current role responsible for innovation and, and science to a large degree within DFAT and that is about helping the Department of Foreign Affairs to improve what it's doing, to, to use science, technology and innovation to do even bigger and better things than we already do, but also working with people in our region to help them solve their challenges using innovation. So I go into large-scale programs of work and I manage the team, manage the issues, risks, work with stakeholders to make sure that, that they're happy and that we're delivering the, the quality of work that we want to deliver. I am a computerised maintenance support officer at Ansto. I currently reside in that position but did a four-year apprenticeship here previous to that as a fitter machinist. I became an engineer because I was very interested in maths and science. When I was a child I had some excellent maths and science teachers. I guess I just wanted to use maths and science in a practical way that I felt like was contributing towards the world. When I'm posted to a ship, I'm a marine engineer officer and on that I manage the day-to-day -day maintenance on a ship. I felt that having a basis of, you know, mathematics, English and science really, really helped me with all the options that were available to me rather than pigeonholing me into a certain career path. I did a, a Bachelor of Arts um, at UNSW and then I went into television um, and then decided that I did not want to go into television. Um, I wanted to become a software developer and that was not a career that I had really considered. 
I love so many things about my job. I get to uh, solve puzzles every day. I get to have an impact on businesses. You've got a great group of like-minded professionals working with you on the flight deck. So you've got access to these great brains to help you problem solve. And then ultimately I've got the responsibility of making the final decision that will enable everyone to get home safely. I always go outside the flight deck after landing to say goodbye to the passengers and um, you know, I can pretty much uh, rely that there'll be someone say something like, did you fly the plane love, you did a great job. But for every one of those there's also a female who will come up and say, you go girl. The things I love about my job are the complexities and the diversity in what I do. Continuous improvement in operations, looking at problems and really getting to the nth degree to try and solve them. And I love watching what's happening with technology and being at the forefront of it is, is exciting. The highlight for me in my career has been involvement in two discoveries, one for uranium in Namibia and one for copper in Mongolia. I love the fact um, that in innovation and in science, particularly research, you're always at the forefront. I don't uh, like going the same place that everybody else has been. I like to drive into new areas. So innovation and STEM are great ways of being the, the next generation of adventurers. I got a chance to shape the people's future and create positive feedback to the society. And this is something I feel very proud of. There's a role for leaders to play to be really supportive of women in, in roles and to encourage them into roles that even potentially they might not consider um, to be important and to really value the difference that women bring and the diversity of thought that they bring into a business. And continuing to hire people who have strong values and opinions, ways of working, great leader mindsets, sometimes needs to be at the front of mind rather than hard skills, which we often lean to when we're in tough hiring decisions. Leadership in support of my career has been fundamental. I got my first indefinite appointment at CSRO 30 years ago when I was seven months pregnant. That's just unheard of, 30 years ago. And it was the leaders at the time who recognised that I had something to contribute. My hope for jobs of the future is that men and women have absolute equality in terms of opportunity in the workforce and absolute equality when it comes to expectations for raising family. We've got to the point where we've got to have a quota system um, just to provide a little bit more opportunity for people. You're still selecting the right people for the job, um, but a lot of recruitment processes are biases, biased towards the male. I think the best thing that business leaders can do is say, we're not making it unfair. It was unfair. It was all skewed towards not making women either feel like they could do these roles or succeed in those roles whenever they got into there. And I think that we need to continue this messaging that uh, we support our women and we're making it an even playing field for everybody now.